Hey, what's up, Zach here, and today I've got the latest addition to the Adidas Barricade line, the Adidas Barricade. I'm not sure if they're calling it the Adidas Barricade 23 for the year 2023 or just Adidas Barricade 2023, but it's, it's the new Adidas Barricade. Let's get into it. And an absolutely huge thank you to the good folks at Tennis Point USA for getting me an early release version of these to try out. If you wanna pick up a pair of these, we'll have links in the description below. Now, when you look at the 2023 Adidas Barricade versus the shoe it's replacing the 2021, from 30,000 feet, they don't look like all that different of a shoe, but it's very small tweaks in the 23s versus the 2021s that make them play like almost a completely different shoe. Now, the biggest upgrades in the 23 Adidas Barricade versus the 21s come in the uppers, most specifically on the medial side, because on the 2023 Adidas Barricade, you have legit herringbone TPU up here in the forefoot as a drag guard versus on the 21s, where you said it's that little tab that I just really never thought was going to do much for draggers. And, you know, the barricades are made for one thing, really aggressive play. and usually means toe dragging and sliding. It really doesn't matter how extreme of a toe dragger you are. These are going to do just fine. You look at these on the upper durability test, 10 seconds highest grid sandpaper. I mean, the burr does start to push through some of that TPU. However, it's so thick, it really doesn't matter. So especially if you're trying to get grip from really compromised positions, the tread pattern on this is going to be really nice. And I've actually made comments on this in previous videos videos that companies should just make tread on the uppers of the shoe because people are sliding so much. Usually use that for grip. Now it looks like Adidas did listen to that or at least someone else came up with that idea on their own. Now when you move across the shoe versus the 21s where it was kind of just molded almost like this shell of an upper. Well if you look at these it does look like a little bit of a mixture of textile threads up there. It is very soft to the touch but it also breathes exceptionally well especially versus the predecessor. If you look at the 23 barricade on the breathability test they only heated up a 113.4 degrees versus on the 2021 barricade at 161.5 degrees of heating. And that really just comes down to the materials in the uppers. Now remember the tongues on these are exactly the same. And speaking of that tongue and kind of the egress of the shoe and kind of where heat's escaping, if you look at the old barricade, the 2021, the lace line goes down really far into the toe box versus on the 23 barricade where it stops a little bit more proximal. And that is going to give you just a little bit more control in the toe box, a little bit more pivoting power out of them. It also makes them easier to tie down versus in the 2021 barricade where, you know, the lace eyelets on the lateral side were these elastic eyelets. You really had to be cranking them down. You were cranking them all the way into the toes. That's what was giving people some numbness and cramping versus on the 2023 barricade. Now it's still outrigger lace eyelets, which I'm still not the biggest fan of because I think there's some durability issues that can come into play with an outrigger eyelet. However, they're non-elastic anymore. They're just sewn in right here to the upper. So there's none of that elastic there. You get a very good tie down. You still get the, the benefit of the offset lacing, which I'm a huge fan of. But what I think is really cool is, you know, versus some of the Nike models in the Vapor Pro 2 and the Vapor 11, where they were looping the laces on the inside to prevent lace fraying with sliding. What Adidas did was, is they just put so much TPU around the ankle collar that the shoelace actually kind of sinks under the TPU. So if you're sliding, the TPU is what's going to hit the ground, not the lace. And on all the other lace lace eyelets, there's actually TPU reinforcement on the outside of them, and that's why they have the outriggers here to, to protect the laces. So on the lateral side, they are integrated as well as reinforced, which is nice. However, I think the biggest thing is, is on the 2023s, when you tie the shoe down, the shoe just ties, and because it is offset, the lockdown is outstanding versus on the 21s, where you could just tie all day and that elastic would just keep going, as well as introduce maybe some durability issues with the laces. So um, just within the baseline huge, huge upgrades. Now the rest of the uppers are pretty much the same. You still get the anatomic padding in the rear foot, which is great around Kager's triangle, kind of sucks your Achilles tendon into the shoe, as well as the tongue. It is nice and molded as well as gusseted all the way down. So when you slip these on, like I said, I keep saying this, but the lockdown, fantastic. But getting into the midsole teardown, this is a real easy one because it's the exact same as the 21. You have an entire bed of Adidas bounce foam. Now the one thing I will say on the 21s as well as the 23s is the stack in the forefoot gets very, very, very low. Your foot really does feel the ground on these, which you know can be a good and a bad thing. It's great for tactile feel. It's not so great for certain things, which we'll look at in the fit section. However, if you look at the bounce height on the barricade, 30 centimeters 
centimeters of bounce height in the heel and then 29 in the forefoot. And what the bounce height test to me says on the barricades is, you know, is bounce foam is really resilient even when it has a very small stack. You know, the, the numbers weren't very much different from the heel into the forefoot. And so it just shows even with a very small stack of bounce foam, it is still actually doing something under there. It actually is still giving you something back. But the one gripe I have about the bounce foam in the Adidas Barricade is that it's not Bounce Pro. You know, I was kind of hoping that Adidas would go with Bounce Pro in the 2023s. However, hopefully that is coming down the line in a future model. The one thing I am glad that Adidas kept in the 2023s was the outsole base shank with this torsion system that goes up really high on the medial side as well as really high and proximal on the lateral side. It does give you so much side to side stability, so much side to side snap. It is just a, a very well designed shank. So I'm glad that that was kind of like, if it ain't broke, don't fix it because this was probably the best part of the 21s. But getting into the outsole tread of the 2023 Barricade, you guessed it exactly the same as the 2021. However, it's kind of hard to go wrong with dual thickness herringbone. You, know, you get a little bit of flatter herringbone into the big toe joint for pivoting, a little bit chunkier and wider on the lateral side of the forefoot for digging in. Then of course it's flipped on the heel. You know, with this, you're going to get grip pretty much in any position that, that your foot finds itself in. These are actually okay for clay as, as long as it's well maintained. However, if you're playing on clay all the time, you should just get a clay version of the shoe. However, with this tread pattern, you know, in terms of side to side speed, side to side stability, the, the dual thickness herringbone is is really, if it ain't broke, you know, don't fix it, like I always say. But if you look at the speed ratio of the 2023 barricades, come in at a 1.95. And, and to me, that, that is pretty representative of the shoe. The shoe is more quick than it is fast. It's not the Cybersonics, right? It's not the Lotto Mirage 100. It, it definitely is a side to side quickness type shoe. So if you're trying to get out of your own way for a half volley at the base, baseline, they're going to be tremendous. If you're trying to run a sprint up and down, you know, the shoe just really isn't made for that. And on the outsole durability test, 10 seconds, highest grit sandpaper. Yeah. Once again, not even a millimeter of damage. All the burr basically does was just cleaned off all the dirt from the treads on these. So like I said, you're looking for a super rugged and now very durable shoe in the uppers as well as outsole barricade your pick. But getting into what is undoubtedly the best part of the 2023 barricade and which is the biggest upgrade from the 2021s is their fit because these things fit so much better than the 21s. The cramping on these is gone from the 21s. You know that the unforgiveness in the forefoot is gone. They still have the same great arch support as the 2021s but without those elastic lace eyelets when you tie them down now you're not having to crank down on a wider foot. Now they're still not a wide set shoe. However, with my tweed with foot, especially on my left side, which is a hair wider than my right, zero cramping, even though I played, I think it was like 93 degrees Fahrenheit when I was testing these out the one day. Um, and I still had no cramping even on that day in these. If you're putting an orthotic and like a really bulky sock in there and you're a two E, probably would go up that one half size just because you want these to fit as one to one as possible. Remember this is the barricade line. It is a performance. It's a rugged wartime shoe. Um, they're not going to be the most plush shoe out there. And that's, you know, pretty typical, of a lot of barricades, especially in the forefoot here. So, you know, heel pain, ball of foot pain, you know, you probably should have an orthotic in these. Um, in terms of like arch strain, arch pain, those kind of things, ankle sprainers, these are going to be just fine for, it, especially because of the low to ground feel in the forefoot. So um, I think in terms of what kind of snake bites you might have on your foot, that's also kind of going to dictate your sizing. And most importantly, looking at the playability of the barricades, Right now, if you're looking for a shoe for a low to the ground feel, ground contact, the ultimate in tactile sensation between your foot and the tennis court, there's not a better shoe out there right now. Um, I will say if I had done that top five tennis shoe list, you know, just a month and a half later, um, I, I'm not sure these would usurp the top three shoes on that list, but it definitely would have been in the running for four or five. The performance in these, now that they're comfortable enough where you can play in them for a little bit longer, you can actually start to really see the tools in these shoes. The side to side quickness, the side to side almost just gliding movement these allow on the court. And especially because like my big toe, my big toe joint could feel the ground so much better in these than some others with that low stack of bounce foam in the forefoot. The interesting thing is, is I wasn't really feeling all that much kind of bottoming 
tightening out of the shoe because bounce is very resilient, uh, but I don't have ball of foot pain, so that, that's not a concern for me. But I, I will say, no matter if I was trying to kind of get out of my own way for a little bit of a half volley in the baseline, like I was talking about before in the speed section, if I was trying to make quick cuts from the center of the court kind of back to a compromised position on a backhand, I could just grip, grab, and go so quickly on these. I, I think the name of the game for the barricade on these is just quick lateral movements. If you're somebody with an all-court game, I'm not sure it, it gets much better than this in terms of raw, rugged performance. It definitely feels like more of a barricade than the 2021 edition does. You know, it definitely feels like that real rugged, just go to battle with type shoe. I really felt a ton of confidence, not even thinking about my footwork, just kind of letting my mind go and just starting to go after shots with these. No issues, side to side movement, no even thought that I was gonna roll one way or the other on these. And I think with that torsion system in the middle, you know, you're not gonna feel like you're gonna bottom out either if you're sliding on the inside of your foot, dragging that foot either. You can have a ton of confidence that number one, the treads on the uppers are gonna grab, as well as that torsion system isn't gonna allow you to over pronate into oblivion on the tennis court. And I gotta say, I haven't been this happy after a play test of a tennis shoe in quite some time because you know I was really surprised by you know what the small tweaks in these really did for the shoe. And I kind of started to feel like you know the barricades of old were coming back. So um, I really had some really good feelings on the court with these. I, I, I think a lot of you that like the older barricade lines will too, because like I said, they're not the wave and force tour in terms of plushness or you know, or the lotto raptors in terms of plushness but they are like the old barricades in terms of rugged, rugged performance on the court. So uh, I am super excited for you to get your hands on these and just kind of see what you think as well. But my biggest question is, you know, are you going to give these a shot? You know, have these kind of piqued your interest now that you've seen kind of the small tweaks and upgrades on them? I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. And if you do want to see my recent top five tennis shoe video to kind of see what the competition is on these and kind of make a choice for yourself if these should have been in that list or not, make sure you click into this video up above and subscribe down below. Respect your rubber and foam and rigid non-elastic shoelace eyelets. Thank you, Adidas. See you in the next one.